Hey guys, it is night 20. Night 20, you hear the river babbling right there. And before it gets too dark, I've arrived. Pinnacles. That right there is Jupiter, and that right there is the moon. You know, I think it's past last quarter too. So I'm dealing with issues of having noon almost all night long. Let me turn my lights back on. Okay, I got the car lights back on. I want you to see the silhouettes. So the strawberry pinnacles. My Milky Way is going to be right down there. Um, you can't see it with the... Maybe you can now. That pinnacle on this side, this pinnacle, and this pinnacle are the strawberry pinnacles. And so it's got a very interesting shape, a lot of rocks. I'm going to light paint those bad boys, and then I'm going to make sure that I have it working for a Milky Way right there. Let me go ahead capture a picture where you can still see it in the AR mode of photo pills. We go in there, check the Milky Way, and then show you what time I need to be here. Look at this photo pills image right here. You can see that it works. You can see that it fits very well right down this path. In fact, I'm gonna keep my car right here and I'm gonna light up this scene because I might enjoy adding in the element of driving the car through. Get some car trails, why not? It could be fantastic. And so here we are, Strawberry Pinnacles, night 20, and it's 9.41, and it's 1.47 that I have to be here for. <sighs> Man, 10.47, 11.47, 12.47, 1. I have four hours to wait until my shot. I have no idea what I'm going to do until then, except maybe watch some Monk episodes on my iPad that I downloaded on Amazon Prime. Brought to you by Amazon Prime. Oh my gosh. It is great to have. So now that I know that I have four hours to wait and this position's great, I'm going to be in the road. I'll have to move the camera if anyone shows up. So I'm not going to do a blue hour lighting of these subjects. But if I can get my camera off the road enough and I feel like the tripod will be safe and not get clamored into by a vehicle, then I would keep it over there catch a shot now and catch a shot with the moon only so I can show blue hour light, moonlight, and then full darkness and see the different types of terrain. And then I'll just keep those and stack. And so I think even four hours early, I think I might get my shot prepared and put my camera over there and just wait here until the time's ready. Four hours from now, I can watch two movies. being in front of this truck, it'd be a real surprise if anyone actually, I'm only lighting my beard. That's weird. A uh, side note, I've only been growing this beard since Escalante's workshop, so about a month and a couple weeks now, a month and a week now. And so I'm really proud that I got that, that, well, you beard growers out there, you know that's not that fast. But I'm proud of it for my growth, and I decided not to shave it until after the whole like 23 day chase. So. Living it up with the hobo beard. So anyway, with a the truck there, should be protected. No one's gonna blast into my camera, I hope. I can add a car trail to this image to take up what is the first third of the shot and make it interesting instead of boring. I know the pinnacles are cool and I know the Milky Way will be cool. And so I'm thinking this will be great if I go ahead, here comes the car. This will be great to work with car trails and then I can go closer for another one. So I think I'll stay here and start out with this shot at this spot. And then early, later in the night, I'll just drive closer 
and then bring my camera out and take another shot because when the Milky Way is right there and blasting through and I'm closer on the strawberry pinnacles, I think I'm gonna appreciate that. So, you know, sometimes it's hard with composition because you want to get a cool foreground that's in the bottom third and then the rest all Milky Way, which is what I have right now, but that coolest foreground is tiny. Perhaps I should go up there and capture a shot while the moon is out because I can get an interesting blue hour shot with the moonlight. I have plenty of time. I hesitate just because if I get closer and all I have is nothing below the pinnacles instead of this road, it's kind of boring. But it also is way more interesting because the pinnacles themselves are not going to be these tiny little features in the image. They're going to be big. And honestly, that's 10 times better. 10 times better. I'm going to move forward. Got to move forward. Got to move forward. I've driven closer. Pinnacles, you can't see them really, but let's see. Right above me. Um, whoop, right there. That's the pinnacle. And there's the top of the little one. The other one's over here. You can kind of see my light hitting it. And then the big one off the side of the road right here. That, that works for a really cool side of it, but man, it does not look good when it comes to the Milky Way. I'm on the opposite side of it now. I'm closer to them and actually underneath them. And the Milky Way is that way. Pinnacle's this way. If I continue on down here where I came from, there's a bend in the road. A bend in a road that really ruins the shot because you end up having the pinnacles off to your right and higher vegetation and trees in the way. So where I was at might be the best spot, but I need to be a little closer. So I might just go right at the bend and go up here on that curve and hang out there so that I can see this. These aren't so big that you can't light paint them. They are very potentially easily light painted, but I'm gonna need more than one light because of that one, that one, and that one. I don't think I can light all three very well if I can even get them at all. So using the moon tonight will be fantastic, but challenge, where do I set up the camera? Where do I set up the camera? Dang it, you see this picture right here? This is the Milky Way being off to the left of the first pinnacle. So Milky Way, pinnacle, pinnacle, pinnacle. And that Milky Way, pinnacle, pinnacle, Milky Way, pinnacle, pinnacle, pinnacle is not gonna be that cool. <sighs> not at all. So I can't do that. That can't be the plan. Mm. I think I do got to go back there. Even though I'm further from the pinnacles, I'm going to have a better shot. I just, I can't look at them this way. I got to look through them this way. And this spot seemed nice and close. I saw all three. I just, I'm looking through it that way. Wrong direction, wrong direction. From this position on the curve, I was just around the curve over there originally. Then I came all the way underneath the pinnacles. Then I went to this point that I came out to the left of the pinnacles. Now, try it even in front of the pinnacles, right up there, but ah, I'd have to wait until morning or 3.48 or something. I don't want to wait that long. And I didn't like the shot all that much anyway. These three pinnacles have a, a feature of their composition where the small middle one can end up being too middle of the pinnacles. So I kind of like it being off middle, not perfectly in the middle. And where I'm ending up right now is somewhere here. So from this position behind the truck, I can keep my camera safe unless someone plows into the back of me. And at that point, what am I gonna do, right? I can't really prevent that. So I'm gonna set up my camera right here I don't have to do a pano. I don't have to care if this isn't level. Uh, none of that has to be concerning. I just steady, hold the camera, get into position, and make sure that the truck isn't in frame. And honestly, it kind of is. You know, I thought I pulled forward enough, and that truck is right there, and the pinnacles are right there. And so, let me just see about my framing. Maybe I can go above the truck and not care that it's in frame. 
Even if it was, I could dodge it out or burn it down, I mean. I can burn it down and then make it work that way. Okay, I have found it. Now, the problem was the truck was showing up in the bottom of the shot. So check out this picture right here. So I'm seeing the corner of the truck and seeing a little bit of the road and seeing the pinnacles up there. So I was thinking I could move back this way or move the truck forward, but why? So I thought, I'll just move the tripod right up next to the truck. So now my 24 millimeter is right here above this corner of the truck and then took a shot and check out this shot. You can see all the trees and green and the truck's visible a little bit where I have this camera, but <laughs> you know, I don't need tons and tons of green. If I put all that green underneath there, what's the purpose? All I need is sort of a foundation, something that gives people context that these pinnacles are coming out of this forested area right here. And that little bit of green right here in this shot, that is all I really need. I get more Milky Way. Let me look at it, in fact. I get more Milky Way. I have just a fifth of green, which is kind of a nice balance. Fifth of green fifth of pinnacles, maybe a little bit more, and they're kind of here, 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 stepping up, so that's better than just flat boringness. And then that Milky Way is gonna come right in the middle right here. So you can see Jupiter in the shot already. You can see the moon is lighting this place up like daylight. And now I'm thinking, you know, this is my setting for a Milky Way shot. If I get this in focus, and then I start doing a time lapse on this, I don't have to ramp at all, because at eight seconds, 8,000 ISO, it's already blown out like this. If it's blown out like this, it's visible, and I can do a time lapse where I see this all go dimmer, 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 and the Milky Way become more visible. So this could be a lot of fun. So I'm gonna leave it like this, right behind the truck, hang out in the truck. <sighs> oh wow, four hours. Hang out for the next three and a half hours and capture the shot. I don't have to do anything except wait for the Milky Way to show up. I don't have to recompose. I don't have to refocus. My work will be finished once I hit the shutter. The only catch is that my camera battery will not last that long. So I need to make sure I put a fully charged battery in here. And instead of going every three seconds like I like to do, I'm going to make this a lot longer interval. Get a new battery, start my time lapse, and I'm going to watch a movie. Sadly, this battery is not full and the other battery is not any better. So we're just going to have to go with this. I have a couple batteries in the office that are charging and would have been charged, but I didn't bring them because I wasn't planning on doing a three hour time lapse. I have plenty of batteries for 20, 30, 50 shots, even hundreds, but time lapse is a different story. So I'll go with the best battery I have. I'm gonna get this thing set up. Let's do this. Right now it is, oh yeah, what time is it? Right now it's midnight, and I have another hour and 47 minutes until it actually happens. So right now it has two bars. Let's not burn through it right now in a time lapse. The cool thing is though, I can start to see the Milky Way, and I can see the detail of the rocks being backlit. So I have a cool shot for that. I just need to wait for the right time, get my focus, make sure everything's nailed and call it. So let's turn off the camera, save, save the battery, and we'll come back in an hour and a half. <sighs> that was so close. All I had was red battery flashing error messages left. <sighs> what time is it now? I think it's about 
2.30 in the morning and the Milky Way has moved into position. Got so excited, got the camera out. The camera that had the battery in it that was okay, that had two bars left at least, that thing went red. It would not turn on. So I thought, okay, maybe I have the wrong battery in. So I switched it out to the other battery thinking, okay, I swapped them in the dark. Maybe I messed that up. No, it was just flat out the same battery dying. Um, boy, it was that scary because I had nothing turning on and I had only seconds to get focus again, get my camera set up in position and then capture the shot and whew, it just did it just in time. I captured a frame and I think I got about five or six options to go from so it worked out. Night 20 did not get ruined by my biff of leaving batteries at home. So. Make sure you don't take only two batteries with you. Bring three or four or five. I mean, that was a huge mistake. But now, <sighs> shot's been captured. Loving it. Night 20 in the books. Thanks, guys, for following me. Thanks for following this, watching the videos. Keep checking out Photog Adventures. Watch the podcast. If you guys enjoy this video, like and subscribe. Hit that like button. Let us know. And hey, in the comments down below, now that we're 20 days in, 20 nights in, let me know if there's any pictures that really been fantastic that you've just loved. Thanks guys, thanks for watching, see you later. It's night 21 and I am most likely getting skunked. It doesn't appear to be a leak. I mean, I don't hear anything. I mean, I'm not exactly the tire whisperer 